All right, good afternoon, everybody. It's a beautiful day today. I'm glad to see such a wonderful turnout. So uh, I'm Todd Mon, the county administrator here for Queen Anne's County. And uh, before we get into the program, would you please uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag? Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So it's my pleasure to welcome everybody here today. And uh, I just wanted to start off by saying that the theme for the 2022 summer reading program at the Queen Anne's County Library is Oceans of Possibilities, a refrain which is reflected very well in this beautiful new facility which stands behind me, an impressive new center for learning which today we have all assembled to celebrate. Today we will observe the latest in library services and design. But first I wanted to take a few minutes and just briefly speak about the proud history of the Queen Anne's County Library System here uh, that we are celebrating today. Our library system was founded back in June of 1909 at the Centerville Free, as the Centerville Free Public Library in Centerville. It opened at the back of Beskitt's store in the Chambers building on the corner of Liberty and Water Streets. Library services then were free, obviously. However, voting members did have to pay at least $1 per year. Quite a contribution back then in 1909. In 1919, the library was then moved to the Anthony building on Water Street. The children's room was in the basement, and there was often no heat in the building at all. There was a bookmobile which was housed in the garage behind the building, and then the library was later incorporated as a nonprofit charitable organization in March of 1928. Then, with the support of our beloved Queen Anne's County Commissioners back then, service was expanded to include the entire county. In 1944, the library's name was changed to the Queen Anne's County Free Library and bookmobile services started countywide in 1951 with the purchase of an army surplus truck. So the bookmobile made stops throughout the county as well as the public, public elementary and middle schools and a service which was unfortunately discontinued in 1990. And we'll hear some more about that later. In December of 1967, the cornerstone was then laid for a new public library building to be built on Commerce Street in Centerville. That land was given to the county by an anonymous donor, and volunteers then moved the collection of books by hand carrying them across the town to the new facility. The library was then dedicated on January 5th, 1969, and the interior of the Centerville branch was completed and renovated, rededicated in June of 2017. In 1977, the study was then funded by the Y Institute, which recommended the construction of a new library building here in Stevensville. So a grassroots effort, much like we have here today, made up of business leaders and residents saw this to fruition. Built on this property that was owned by the county, the Kent Island branch officially opened in August of 1989 here in Stevensville. And then expansion and renovation of this library began in 2020. So today, you will hear from several additional guests who represent the various entities that assisted us in ushering in this exciting new era for the Queen Anne's County Library System. The Maryland State Library, your county commissioners, and you, the citizens of Queen Anne's County. So before I turn the podium over to our next speaker, I wish to recognize a few of the dedicated county staff and partners who have been instrumental to orchestrate the design and the construction of this facility. First, our director of the Queen Anne's County Library, Janet Salazar. All right. Our Kent Island branch manager, Julie Rinelli. She's here somewhere. There we go. I got the sound back just in time for Julie. The architects, Becker Morgan Group, we have Craig Williams, Brad Hastings, and their team is here today. Our contractors and construction managers, Plano Cowden 
Andrew Hooker, Justin Vega, and Ken Zuknik. Our Public Works Chief Engineer Lee Edgar and his project team, uh, David Sadiq, Matt Lucas, and our Quality Insurance Inspector Pat Mooney. They're here today. Thank you all. But most importantly, I need to recognize our uh, county elected leaders, uh, without whom none of this would have been possible, obviously. And we have all five of them here today with me, and I want to recognize each one of them. Jim Moran, our at-large county commissioner. He's back here. We have Jack Wilson, our commissioner from District 1. We have Stephen Wilson, our commissioner from District 2. Philip Dumino, our commissioner from District 3. And now I have the pleasure of introducing Chris Corcorino, your District 4 representative and the president of the Queen Anne's County Board of Commissioners, as our next speaker. All right. All right. How many of you, when you were younger, got in trouble for speaking too loudly in the library? Well, you know, gone are those days. Today, libraries are light and fun, aesthetic, pleasing, inviting, and ergonomically and flexible, environmental friendly, with spaces ranging from intimate and all of which accommodate technology. Following this ceremony, we hope that you'll continue to, uh, in tide, to enjoy the remarkable new library space that's been built over the last 12 months, it has a vastly expanded children's area, a dedicated teen lounge, private study rooms, all new bright airy spaces and new computer stations. And this is just the beginning. Tomorrow, work will commence on phase two of the project, converting the old library space into the community meeting rooms, a maker space, and more reading and workspaces. This construction will continue into the fall, but the new library space will remain open for the public to use and enjoy throughout that whole period. And tomorrow, the bookmobile returns, reimagined in the form of the new Queen Anne's County Mobile Library. How many of you remember the old bookmobile? When I moved to Queen Anne's County, we didn't have this library. We just had the bookmobile, or you had to go up to Centerville to get it. And while the, the, uh, the bookmobile was a lot of fun, when this opened, I was in high school, um, and it was a great resource for me, and I can only imagine for my kids the great resource we're going to have with this new and expanded library. This has been a team effort through and throughout. A few moments ago, Todd spoke briefly to the history of Queen Anne's County Library and its founding in Centerville over 100 years ago. With the support of the Queen Anne's County Commissioners, service was expanded to include the entire county during World War II through the establishment of the Queen Anne's County Free Library, with the emphasis on free, as the library's mission will be available to all citizens at no cost. 2009 not only marked the centennial of Queen Anne's County Library, but also the 20th anniversary of the Kent Island branch. In 1979, a local poll indicated strong interest in the library on the island, and a grassroots movement made up of community leaders and residents saw the project to fruition, and the Ken Island branch officially opened August 29th, 1989. Fast forward nearly 30 years, and in a similar fashion, it was the encouragement of Queen Anne's County community during a time of many competing fiscal priorities, which guided the county commissioners to recognizing the importance of this project, the expansion and renovation of the Ken Island branch that had to be made a priority. And the community didn't stop there. There are 600 bricks, a half a million dollars, which are a testament to your work. We're grateful for your partnership and thank you. Now, if you please permit me to introduce another partner, Irene Padilla is our state librarian who is instrumental to match our local contribution dollar for dollar. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here today, and I'm so glad the, the weather is cooperating with this library event. Um, I know that you're all library lovers, right? Yeah? Yeah, okay. That's why you're here, and we're very blessed to have 
uh, local commissioners and other elected officials who are very supportive of the library, so we appreciate that. Library facilities are a crucial part of America's infrastructure. During the pandemic, libraries endured as essential lifelines to members of our community in need, providing access to Wi-Fi and internet, access to computers and other digital resources, and opportunities to develop valuable skills at any age. Maryland has provided mandated state funding for public library capital needs since 2008. Fiscal 2022 is the 15th year that the state assistance will be available to public libraries in Maryland. Program priorities include geographic diversity and stimulating local support for library facilities development, which has already been spoken to here today. And thank you again for all of your efforts. Since the inception of the program, $74,825,000 has been authorized. This has leveraged more than $365 million in local matching funds across the state, something I don't even think they could have dreamed of at that time. It's nearly six times the amount of the state's investment. And the need continues. Uh, libraries in Maryland have $175 million in capital needs um, to improve infrastructure, provide better library service to our customers and communities, and create jobs. The very first state capital grant for the Kent Island branch was for $187,000 in 2018, and I believe that this, this uh, funded the planning and design of, of this project. Um, this was followed by a million dollars in 2020, $2.5 million in 2021, and finally this year, $130,000 in uh, for furnishings. So we have spent at the state level $3,955,000 for design, construction, and furnishings for this project, and we're so pleased to be able to do that. Um, Janet's done a terrific job uh, here in Queen Anne's, and I could tell when people, when she was introduced that People have gotten to know her, and, and I'm so glad that she's here as your administrator. She's terrific. Um, but, you know, we're just so happy to be able to help you all get over the finish line. That's what this program is all about. And next time I come for the final completion of the project, I hope to be able to say with a sigh of relief that we all lived happily ever after. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Irene. Okay, our next uh, speaker is the president of the Board of Library Trustees, Bill Silva. Hey, Bill, good morning. Well, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Queen Anne County Library, welcome. Welcome to this auspicious event, a great day for the library and a great day for the community. Thank you for coming. There are many people who have made this day possible and we would like to recognize a few of them. First and foremost, the commissioners of the county and the staff of the county, which they've been with us from the very beginning and have really made this day possible. A big thank you to Janet Salazar, our director, who joined us sort of in the middle of this venture when things were sagging a bit, and she got us back on course. Julie Rinelli, the branch manager, has been with this project from the very beginning. And she and her staff persevered during the construction with the double difficulty of the pandemic. We thank the Capital Campaign Committee, its co-chairs, Ann Ziegler and Jennifer Owino, for all their work. It was not easy raising funds during a pandemic, but they did a great job. Their success is due in part to their consultant extraordinaire, Kathy Smerick. 
<laughs> Kathy, a former president of the Friends of the Library, has been working for the library for years. And her successor, Connie Zillig, is continuing the good work with the Friends, over 500 strong. Finally, thank all of you who made contributions, bought bricks, and offered moral support. Your efforts are appreciated now and will be for generations to come. A lasting legacy to the library and our community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. And now, without further ado, we're going to hear from the director of the Queen Anne's County Library, Ms. Janet Salazar. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I also would like to welcome you to the completed phase one of our Kent Island Branch expansion project. I think you will find that the space is welcoming. It invites you to come in and stay a while. And the staff is here and ready to assist you with anything that you need. This project, as you have heard, has been a long time coming, and it's great to see it coming together. There are many people to thank for this. Our elected officials, especially our county commissioners and our county administrator, for believing in the project and pledging matching funds for the construction grants. Also, thank you to the Maryland State Library Agency for making the construction grants available to libraries across the state and Irene for growing that actual grant program while she has been the state librarian. I want to thank our board of trustees for keeping the vision of a 21st century library branch that is right sized for its community first and foremost in their vision for the Queen Anne's County Library. I want to thank our project team for always having the best interest of the users of the library at the heart of any decision that was made. Thank you to the friends of the Queen Anne's County Library for all your support through this project and all the many years you have been supporters of the library. And thank you to our Capital Campaign Committee, who I'm going to name because they did some really hard work. Jennifer Owino, Ann Ziegler, Hillary Lindemann, Patrick Perry, Kristen Peronis, Julie Rinelli, Jean Ransom, Marshall Ryans, Audrey Scott, Bill Silva, Kathy Smerick, and Allison Wood. You all worked very, very hard to get us where we are. Without your work, we would not have met and exceeded our goal. Our goal was $500,000, and I'm happy to report that 548 donors contributed $534,000 to this project. So thank you to our community. Almost 70,000 of that was just in brick sales, and you'll be able to see the bricks over here behind us. They're not all in yet, so if you bought one and it's not there, it is coming, but there are some there. Thank you to our donors who gave us so generously to support the vision of this branch. Thank you to my library staff, who are awesome. They are the best library staff in the state. I thank you for keeping our community informed of all the various stages and changes and everything that was happening since the beginning of this project. So thank you very, very much. I also need to say a special thank you to Julie, who has been my right hand during this whole thing through the whole phase one and is gonna be there for the whole phase two. I could not have been the, as successful without her. She's got all of the knowledge. I also need to thank Kathy Smerick because without her tireless work on the capital campaign, we would not have been as successful as we are. And last, oh, go ahead. Yes, she deserves another round of applause. And lastly, I need to thank you, our community, for your unwavering support of this project. I know that our former director here, John, um, was going through some tough times when I first met him and he actually had to leave something that we were attending together. He goes, because we're fighting for the library tonight and you all made this project happen. So I appreciate your unwavering support of this project. Your love for your public library shows and we thank you for your patience while we continue into phase two of our project 
the renovation of our original building. With your support, our completed Kent Island branch will be a resource for you for many years to come. So thank you. Okay, that concludes all of our speakers for today. Uh, and before we cut the ribbon and enter and take a look at the new uh, facility, I wanted to just inquire to see if any of my other Board of Commissioners wanted to say anything today while we're here? No? I think Chris knocked it out of the park. Okay, all right, great. All right, well, I will say that uh, in closing that this truly is um, a community project, a community effort. It's been ongoing for many, many years, as you've heard. You know, our library board, our library staff, our county commissioners. We have a couple commissioners here from previous boards, Commissioner Gene Ransom and Commissioner Mark Anderson that I see out there in the audience today. And thank you for your contributions in the years earlier uh, on this project. Uh, but it is a community project. It has been needed here uh, on Kent Island here in Stevensville. So I'm, we're very, very happy to complete phase one. And we're looking forward to phase two. And we want to invite everybody back uh, this fall for uh, part two when we can open up the entire facility uh, to the citizens of Queen Anne's County. So um, that's all we have for today. We can now uh, go ahead and cut the ribbon. So, so please join me up here for the ribbon cutting. <laughs>